So there are some kind of things that we should uh, pay attention when we define our reinforcement learning framework. And it is, for example, uh, the, the way that we want to give the reward or feedback to our agent. Sometimes it happens that the rewards are not coming immediately. For example, in the chess uh, game, the agent uh, the agent is uh, pl uh, playing with a com uh, with uh, with a machine or another um, uh, component so the the at each step we don't give the feedback to the agent their uh, reward will comes at the end of the game so we will have very sparse reward reward at the end of the gaming so it makes the scenario uh, really very difficult very complex as a uh, optimization problem because uh, the agent couldn't know which action leads the agent to win or lose the game sometimes we define some kind of um, dense um, uh, reward for example uh, with the help of uh, some kind of master in the game or if you consider it the environment as a game we define some kind of uh, reward after each or after a sequence of actions to help the agent to choose the best action uh, possible so this kind of uh, environments we called it semi-supervised learning and the rewards are time delayed label and it is i uh, insist that it is uh, one of the reasons that make this kind of reinforcement learning problem very complex the other challenge that uh, maybe we uh, are facing with is how we can uh, define something that we called uh, um, uh, uh, how we, uh, sorry, I'm talking about this one, how, how we can define this kind of dilemma between exploration and uh, exploitation. Sometimes it is maybe uh, more safe than, uh, more safe, um, it is safer for the agent to take the action that he knows it leads the, it leads it, uh, it leads the agent to the better kind of reward. But sometimes we need to do some kind of exploration in the environment and try the other type of the action that maybe in the following, they will give us the better kind of reward in the environment. So finding some kind of dilemma between exploration and exploitation is another kind of challenge of the um, uh, reinforcement learning uh, and also in machine learning as well. So do we need to continue uh, the thing that we are more uh, uh, more satisfied or more sure that it can uh, lead us to the good result? Or maybe we can do some kind of exploration, uh, have some kind of new experience, and based on that, take maybe the other type of actions. So, uh, in reinforcement learning, there is always a trade-off uh, between uh, whether the agent should reuse one of its good action or try another new action. And uh, as I mentioned, it is exploring, uh, exploration, exploitation, dilemma. So the reward sometimes comes by delay. And we need to define something that we call the total reward or return that we are showing it by the summation of the re all the rewards that uh, the agent will take from uh, from now till the end of the game. So this summation could uh, uh, could be shown like this: the reward for the for the for this moment, plus the rewards that comes later. So most of the time, we applied something that we called it discounted uh, factor that I'm showing uh, with a gamma. And it helped us to give some kind of uh, uh, penalty or not, not penalty. We will give some kind of um, uh, impact on the rewards that will come later. The concept is for example, if we are doing some kind of action and there is immediate reward after, uh, and 
if I do the same action, but the reward comes later, I would like to give the reward immediately. Because of that, the gamma is a value between uh, 0 and 1 that it gives some kind of, uh, 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 some kind of weight to the um, actions or the, to the reward that, we, that comes later. So until now, I guess that we cover all the components of uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, or deep reinforcement learning. If you have any question, uh, I, I will be happy to answer it from the component in, in reinforcement learning. Okay, it seems not, so I continue by uh, defining very, uh, uh, very important uh, function in deep reinforcement learning that called Q uh, functions. So uh, the Q function uh, is simply a function that takes uh, the, as an input two things, the state, the current state that the agent is in and the current action that is uh, executed in this current state. And the output of the Q function is the expected total feature sum of the reward. So the Output is expected total future re future reward. Sorry, future reward that we called it return as well. So, uh, for for defining this kind of um, Q function, we need to take the policies. We need to define the policies. So, and the policies is ultimately the uh, it's ultimately the agents need to infer the best action to take at this state. So what is the best action that if the agent at this state takes, give the highest reward or um, uh, highest expected reward? So we uh, define the um, uh, policy uh, that I'm shown here with a P. Uh, it gives S a state as an input. And we just want to have the maximum expected reward at each, uh, based on each action. So uh, the the question is now how we want to uh, define this policy. This policy is a probabilistic because our environment is probabilistic. Or environment is follow something that we called it Markov decision process. So, at each uh, state, there there is a probability for getting each uh, uh, for at each state there is a probability for choosing one of the actions, and it means that there are some kind of uh, there are some kind of um, um, not determinant uh, stochastic uh, environment, and because of that, we need to have a probabilistic uh, policy also to take decision in this kind of uh, stochastic environment. So, uh, the the way that we uh, uh, consider this Q function till now for us was like a, something that we called it, for example, a black box. We didn't really pay attention what is inside this Q function. We just give as an input the uh, state and the action. The Q function will do some kind of magic, and at the end, he will tell us, OK, based on this action, what could be the uh, expected um, uh, reward for you in the future? But if I want to just uh, uh, talk uh, more uh, about this kind of uh, Q function, I would like you see this kind of uh, uh, scenario. There is a game, Atari uh, Breakout, that there is, uh, if I want to define this scenario, there is an agent that uh, we can see here, is a, um, uh, there is a, um, a pedal that it can choose one of these two action to, sorry three action to the go to the left go to the right and do nothing stay at the place that you are there is something that we called it ball it comes toward the uh, agent and uh, the agent should take the policy that based on this state 
that uh, we, we can see the, the uh, frame that we can see in the, uh, in the screen. Based on this state, which type of action should I choose? The task, the objective of the game is break out as much as uh, we can these kind of colorful bars uh, on the top. So we will get the score based on this kind of breaking out and we will lose if this bar goes out of the game. So uh, the Q function essentially tells us the expected total re reward that we can expect by giving a certain state and pair, uh, an action pair. So if you, I, I, I believe that uh, you played this kind of games. I played it a lot when uh, a lot of uh, years ago. And uh, I can say that I wasn't really master in the game. But if you being uh, really master in the game, I, I, I bet maybe it's difficult for you as well to take decision which type of the action is the best in this kind of scenario. Just imagine in the A, the ball comes uh, comes uh, towards the uh, pedal, and we, uh, the agent takes decision that if he, he doesn't move, it just stay at the place that it is. The uh, ball will uh, uh, will hit the middle of the uh, pedal, and it just goes up and by sure ruin some kind of these colorful. Uh, blocks. The, in the B scenario, the agent should move to the right side. The balls are coming, and if we have a good uh, speed, good chance, maybe the agent can uh, the, uh, can hit at the corner of the ball, and uh, it gets back to the up and uh, ruin some some type of these colorful uh, blocks. So uh, it's uh, sometimes really difficult for human to take decision which kind of action give me the best uh, uh, Q values or the best uh, reward. So I just want to show you uh, that the answer is the B. We will see why. But I want to show you the videos that uh, show the two scenarios. In the first one, the agent tries to hit uh, exact, uh, exactly, uh, uh, sorry, the ball is heated exactly in the middle of the agent. And if I can play it, yeah. You can see the, uh, by sure, we will, uh, we will win the game. It takes time, but uh, we, Reun most of the uh, the um, uh, this colorful box on the top. In the scenario B, you are seeing that the agent maybe sometimes uh, it's uh, purposely just uh, uh, go a little far from the uh, ball, and when it's coming, it's just go. Uh, with this uh, kind of aim to just hit the corner of the uh, the ball, and you see that it could find a very a small narrow hole in one of the corners, and after that, very smartly, the uh, bl uh, the color blo blocks will be ruined by themselves from the top. So we will win very fastly. But maybe it is not the uh, the type of action that most of the times the human uh, takes because the risk of failure is really high in this uh, second type of actions. But when we not we when uh, they train the model, uh, the agent, the reinforcement uh, learning agent, prefer to take this kind of actions to win the game faster. So it is really, uh, uh, I believe, interesting scenario that uh, we saw here. But uh, how we can use deep learning in these kind of uh, uh, scenarios, deep reinforcement learning scenarios? 
there are two kind of approaches that we can uh, bring in to take uh, the advantage of the deep learning and uh, reinforcement in reinforcement learning. One of them is, uh, for example, this scenario that the agent that I mentioned is our model can take as an input the state and the action. So we uh, uh, train the model based on the action that we chosen, for example, the right and the image that comes, the frames that comes, and it will give us the probability, the output, the reward based on this action that we chosen. So action plus a state comes as an input and as an output, the model will give us expected return. So by sure, there are, con uh, there are some uh, kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, problems with this kind of network that we designed. So the other type of network, you can see it here, it just give as an input the state, and the agent will give us the probability of each type of action that is possible in this action uh, space that we have. For example, in this scenario, we had three types of actions. We give the state, the frame, the image that we have to the model, and the model will calculate based on this state that you, you gave to me, the probability of each action should be this one. So for the first scenario, it's obvious that for each type of action, you need to train the model again and again. So it's really time consuming and it's not efficient. But in this scenario, it's really interesting. We just give the state and we can uh, calculate the uh, probability of each action in, in this state. And based on the policy that we have, we just choose the best one. So, uh, but what uh, the question that is raised now is what happens if we take all the best actions? So let's think about the best case scenario, the optimum one. Uh, how, how an agent would likely perform in ideal case? In ideal case, all the times, we just take the best action. So the, uh, the, it, it means that the target return would be maximized, okay? And it serves as a ground truth or of our train uh, agents. So in order to train the agent, we will ultimately maximum, maximize the target return. So till now, if we consider the deep learning, we are trying like a chain to put each component of deep learning next to each other we understood that the model by itself is our agent, what is input, and how we can uh, calculate the output, what we expect as an output. But something is missed till now, and it is the way that how we want to measure the, our performance. So by sure, the measure comes by calculating the loss of our performance loss uh, function that in this scenario we called it q loss so if we consider that this is our ground truth we want to maximize the return so we called it target and we have something that we called it predict based on the state and action the q function will predict what uh, could happen if we just calculate the difference of these two, you see it here, uh, the complete formula. If you, if we uh, calculate the difference of uh, or divergence of these two, the target and prediction, and we get the norm of them, and after that, for example, we uh, got the mean square error, you can have the last value for this expected reward function. So it is the last part of the chain that we can now have the uh, model, deep, uh, deep model for reinforcement learning that we called it DQN. 
in the uh, if I get back to the scenario of uh, the uh, the game uh, break out the game that we had so I just uh, give as an input the frame the uh, the model the agent by itself uh, um, uh, train uh, different kind of uh, actions uh, in this kind of state and it gives us as an output for example for this action go to the left the reward could be 20. If you stay in a place that you are, the reward is 3. And if you go uh, to the right, there is no reward. So the policy that we show it with P for us is maximizing this kind of expected reward. So based on this kind of policy, we choose the first action, go to the left. And we just send it back to the dynamic environments that we have yeah to the agent so the next state as st plus one comes yeah and based on that we continue we back propagate uh, the feedback to the environment and we continue this training a lot and a lot and after that uh, we can train model several times and we could when we are satisfied based on the performance on the training we can like deep learning go for do the testing so if i uh, want to show it in a, a schema of um, deep uh, learning dq uh, and atari result we can say that we have the frame by sure, we will have some kind of uh, convolutional uh, layers. We will have some kind of fully connected layer to take decision, to calculate the probabilities of each action. Based on that, we will take the decision. We calculate the error. We send it, uh, we back propagate it to fine tune, to calculate the weight, to fine tune the value of the weight, and we continue it till the time that we got the highest performance. So, um, in the next slide, in this slide, you are seeing that um, um, uh, Google, deep AI teams in Google, tries to apply the same model that we saw, DQN, in Atari, uh, Atari games, most of the uh, Atari uh, games. And you, the, the plot shows us most of the uh, more than 50% of the uh, uh, this kind of strategic games, the machine, the reinforcement uh, learning algorithm can surpass the human level uh, way of playing the games. There are some games that uh, uh, the, the human plays better than the reinforcement uh, learning algorithm or agents, but for most of them, there is a very uh, big difference between the uh, performance of the uh, human and the reinforcement learning uh, agent. So, the model that I introduced uh, till now, the key uh, value and defining the policy that are part of the Q value learning, they have some kind of downsides. If I want to categorize them, simplify them in just two categories, I can mention that uh, they don't work very well in complex environments. When the, uh, we have the sequence of uh, uh, action, uh, sequence of decision that we should uh, take, and uh, they they are like very related to each other. So in continuous environments, like for example, uh, when we have uh, in autonomous uh, driving car, when we want to string the wheel angle, so it is very difficult to use this kind of approaches in these scenarios. So. The other things that you saw, it's uh, in these scenarios, we have very uh, finite uh, action space. It could be by show more than four, more than 10, but it is finite. We couldn't go for uh, a lot of actions, uh, uh, calculate the possibilities of a lot of actions in our action space. The other thing is, uh, 
uh, the, uh, this type of algorithm is not really working well in uh, a stochastic environment. And because of that, there are the second type that we saw earlier that is called policy value learning. So we get uh, advantage of policy gradient method to calculate the uh, to calculate the uh, the uh, 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 the uh, probability of the uh, policy. So and based on that, we decide which action should be chosen in each uh, associate scenario or state. So uh, most of the presentation that I wanted to do is uh, over. I provide two videos. I don't know that uh, we have time to watch them or not, but I, I, I will share by sure uh, the slides uh, after the uh, meeting. The uh, one of them is uh, Alpha Star. I, I, I'm sure that you heard about Alpha Go. There is the next version of Alpha Go that's called Alpha Zero. The, uh, the Go is a game that uh, um, um, if you just, um, I don't want to uh, show all the uh, video, but if you see here, for example, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it takes time. So, but there is a game that uh, we, uh, uh, there is a board like chess. I'm not expert on that and I don't know exactly what is the rule, but there is a uh, board and there are there is a lot of probability really, uh, a big amount of probability for each type of action that you can do. So there was a, a reinforcement learning agent that plays with the uh, champion of the uh, this game, and he could beat him uh, with very uh, a big difference uh, in the score. And after that, uh, the thing that was matter in this AlphaGo first version there was some kind of uh, super visionary by the human. So it means that there were, some, there were some kind of masters in the game of Go that uh, somehow supervised the agent during the process of the training. But in this AlphaGo Zero, if you watch the video that uh, I will share with you later, you will see that the agent by itself try to learn himself from the scratch so there isn't any kind of uh, supervision in the middle and if you remember at the beginning i said that reinforcement learning is something between supervised and unsupervised in this uh, alpha go zero there is not any kind of uh, supervision the other one that i uh, had if i back to the Okay, this one is uh, another algorithm with the name of Alpha Star that uh, played the StarCraft game version two. And uh, there is, I guess, a five minutes video that shows uh, how uh, the reinforcement learning can beat the two uh, master champion of the game uh, with a score of five to zero. And uh, the, all the information about how they design the model, calculate the policy, uh, all, all of the things are mentioned in these two um, web-like uh, web posts that I mentioned there. 